Oh, Jesus. Oh, it's cold. Yeah, it does that. Does what? Gets cold in this world. Ding, ding, ding. Oh, how's it going? Yeah, it's all right, isn't it? Um, it's all right. I hear some sizzling going on in the background there. Oh, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, she just, uh, oh, she, norm she normally chooses to start tinkering around just as we're about to, you know, set into podcast <laughs> sunset. <laughs> What's she making? She's making, oh, it should only be one minute. Uh, she's making egg, rice. Um, that sounds like a breakfast to me. It's like some sort of egg fried rice. Oh, egg fried rice. Yeah, egg fried rice. With what? What else? That's it. Are you putting the chicken in it from the wings? Maybe. Maybe. Is this your dinner as well, or is she just making it for herself? Not really. I, I don't even think I'm going to have anything. Oh. Got pizza at like two o'clock, so it's all good over here. Just got halfway through the day and thought I could order a pizza, couldn't I? What did you, where did you go? Obviously Domino's, but what did you get? Pizza Hut, never Domino's. Oh, you and, went uh, Pizza Hut. Did you get the garlic sprinkles on the edge? Yeah, I did, yeah. And Miyako's realised that they're the best bit, so she just licks the garlic sprinkles off the pizza, which is great. <laughs> um, uh, off every slice? Does she go around every no, slice? Like, no, yeah, but yeah, as, soon, yeah. as soon as one lands on her plates, it's de-sprinkled. Um, <laughs> but she's not licking them all that bit, a bit Is much. that because she's seen you do that? No, I don't do that. I want my sprinkles on the crust so that I can enjoy the crust with the sprinkle. At the edge, do you get stuffed crust or just the regular, normal? Normal. Stuffed crust is like, people don't... <sighs> Yeah, I'd I'd get stuffed crust if the cheese in there was anything other than like ninety percent rubber. Like oh, yeah. I've seen I've seen the cheese that goes in there. It's like a it's like a a hot dog that's obviously three times longer. Yeah, and it's just like they just it's just it a over. piece of fucking shitty rubber. How? No, they don't, they don't even roll it. It comes like that. No, just... you roll the you you. Oh, you roll the crust over yeah, you roll it. The yeah, crust yeah, over. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's yeah, like it's a like giant a long cheese, cheese string. string. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, how does Claudia all know? How how do they um, make sure that the the crust doesn't unroll when it's being cooked? How do you like make sure it? You crimp it onto the other crust, don't you? But Claudia, how do you make sure the crust doesn't unroll when you're cooking it? You just press it against the other dough. Tuck it. Yeah, you like tuck it over. Ah, oh, you tuck it over. Okay. Yeah. Give it a little tuck. Some of them do unfold. Some of them do unfold. Do you have to remake it if that happens? That'd be a remake, and then everyone go ah. Oh. What happens to that pizza? Just gives to you driving and uh, you just eat it. It goes on, on the top shelf. And uh, you know what? If it's busy, it just sits there on the top shelf and no manager goes to the drivers or anyone else. Oh, there's a pizza over here. Um, and it just sits there and gets old. But if it's like not quite, if it's not busy and that happens, then all the drivers would just like just assume it's up for grabs and would just sit there eating pizza. Nice. Um, so, yeah, remakes are good. Um Cue the music, episode 10. Da -da 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 -da. Welcome to the Just Swim podcast, the podcast where we talk about some uh, events of the, the past week, past two weeks in this case, um, so that we can further the, the humankind and its um, beautiful nature of thinking with minds uh, that not many other animals have. My name's Woody. I'm Tim. I have been suffering uh, the last day and yes, kind of yesterday. It started off yesterday as like a kind of a headache. Um, but I think I've got a problem with my teeth. Um, it feels like it's my wisdom tooth on my right hand side of my face. Top or bottom? Top. Yeah. And is it on the is it on the outer side of the gum or the inner side? If you had to choose a side where the pain is. 
uh, it's kind of behind. It's like it's it's more behind the t- tooth into the jaw. If you know what I mean, like the it, what it feels like is it feels like after after the tooth where your jaw line no longer has teeth and it goes flat. Yeah, and it like smooths off. Yeah, yeah, it's there. That's where it feels like it's hurting. Yeah. Um, Have your wisdom tooth come through yet? Well, I can feel it. I so can. You might might not be poly- qualified for the uh, for the podcast in that case. I can definitely f- feel the the parts of the wisdom, wisdom tooth out. I think yeah. what's happening is it's um it's piercing through the the gum. Yeah, mine tried doing that, and then like they saw the amount of coke on the outside, and it was like fuck that, I'm shit, not going fi- out fi- there. Yeah, fizzy, <laughs> fizzy drinks. They were like, let's just fucking give up now. <laughs> and then they started doing whatever they wanted. And then every time I go to the dentist, they're like, should we do something about these? So I'm like, well, well. L- like I've only got X amount of money for today's <laughs> sesh. So what do you think? Prioritize. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, I was but... I was thinking the other day I should do a uh, should do a lockdown dentist trip. Just oh, just yeah, I think I. I think I need to do that. I will do one before we move house. Like, I might even turn up with a double budget. Just be like, set me off for the next few years. Yeah. Um, um, but I, I, if I could, it's interesting because I was thinking the other day, if there was a price on how much it would be to, I want my teeth exactly the shape that they are, but I want them to be thicker without any problems inside of them, um, whiter, and just freaking great. If I could buy those teeth, I'd be very interested to know the price. Like eight grand, ten grand, I reckon. Uh, nah, because th- this is it. I reckon that I'd be like eight grand. It'd be like with a caveat of like for the next, like in 15 years, you'll want to come and see us and like you might realise that you can't feel your mouth and stuff like that. Like, <laughs> I, I want, do you know what I mean? If, if I buy teeth, I don't want to be eating and, and, and feeling like I'm crunching with teeth that aren't connected to my gut. Do you know what I mean? I want the sense to be there. and if, I don't know. I'd, I want it to be exactly the same. I want fresh new teeth. And and I'm telling you, if that's eight grand, I will consider it deeply once we've moved out. Really? You'd spend eight grand on your teeth? I think it's a big thing. I think I, I've been thinking about this a lot because cause it's like I think my teeth are probably the only thing that make me realise I'm not 20 anymore. And yeah, true. Feeling 20 and having that energy about yourself and the confidence about yourself and not having to worry about certain things or whatever... I just think it would be great. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, maybe I think I think te- there's another thing to this, which is I think that teeth are quite psychologically linked to your emotions. Um, I think people look at their teeth quite a lot, don't they, in the mirror? I, I don't just think it's the look. I think it's almost the health. Like a lot of people have dreams about their teeth falling out. Yeah, I have lots um, of those. Yeah, and it's it's to do with the idea of like Feeling self-deprivation of and and not yeah almost not being in sync with your bodily self yeah. and how these things just tick over and I think that's your body just saying oh by the way like uh, you know I'm not just like a shit show you've got to actually like keep tabs on this stuff <laughs> um, so yeah I'm sorry to hear you've got toothache though what I would say is uh, I found that. Um, Ibuprofen is better well, than paracetamol. Well, here's the thing that I was going to go into is I can't take tablets. What, you can't swallow them? Yeah, that, my body just like, doesn't let... Doesn't what, allow... like, you start gagging? No, it's not that like I start gagging. It's just I don't know the... It's like I forget how to swallow. It's like... Yeah, no, 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 no. So I know how to do this because I I did this my whole life. Like I would have to crush everything up. Even a paracetamol, I'd crush it into like a hundred pieces and like almost like be dabbing it. Like. Yeah. Um, so what you want to do is you just get the pill, put it on the back of your tongue, and then just start drinking water, and it will just go. It's, uh, don't have like one gulp and try and like <laughs> like actually just drink, drink, drink. And you'd be like, oh. I didn't even notice it, but you have to like open your mouth, put it on the, the back of the, your tongue. The thing is, is my, um, I have like, it's, it's like my mouth doesn't want it to swallow and so it will move it out of the way. Yeah, no, 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 but that's because you're, you're so that means you're bringing the side of your tongue into play and stuff like that. If you put the pill on the center at the like three quarters of the back of your mouth, you won't be able to move it away. You literally won't be able to move it. Right. Um, so well, try I've... and dry your mouth out first and it will definitely stay in place. But Yeah. 
I think but, we should do that. That'd be a good. Uh, that'd be a good little YouTube vid, actually. No, no, definitely <laughs> not. Would he try his paracetamol? <laughs> 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 That'd be fucking great. Um, yeah, I used to be like that though. I don't think I don't think you should just accept defeat. Like it, it can be done. And even if it can't, then there are other things you could do. You could just get some cow pole and have a swig of that. Well, I've it's it's not that bad at the moment. It's I mean it's bad. Don't drink sugary drinks. Well, even apple juice is a sugary drink. Just I, I said to her, I was she was like. Um, she was like, don't drink Coke anymore. I was like, yeah, I know, definitely. Like, if I did, I'd have a Diet Coke. She's like, no, don't drink Diet Coke. And I was like, oh, right, well, yeah, I mean, I'd have a Ribena. She's like, no, don't have a Ribena. And I was like, oh, I'd have fresh juice. And she was like, no, don't have fresh juice. Really? It's got acid in it. Um, and this is after I'd had, like, a few different fillings, stuff like that. And I was like, okay, so um, what, what, can can I, I what can I have? And she was like, well, with the, uh, the, the, the material we use to fill your teeth is gonna like just decompose over time anyway and water is the one that will have the least effect on it so you can drink water <laughs> brilliant yeah I was, like, I was like fucking hey like do you know what i mean in this day and age honestly why did you even fill them in and i think a lot of the time she fills them in and i'll go back and and she just fills the same one in and i'm just like well well, this is not scalable. <laughs> That's how right. they make their money. I know, of course they do. Yeah. They're just fucking. <laughs> they're like, oh yeah, this uh, this liquid is worth a hundred hundred pounds per cubic centimeter, <laughs> and they've just got tubs of it. It's like butter yeah. coming in, just uh, like yeah. barrels and barrels of butter that dissolves in your mouth. <laughs> but then I look back. So my granddad, going to granddad stories when he was evacuated in the war, went out to Ireland. And every like year, there'd be like almost an ice cream truck that came, except for it'd be the guy who's a dentist, and he'd literally just look at your teeth and be like, "Oh, that one's got to go. That one's got to go." And he'd just pull your teeth out. Yeah. And uh, so he grew up basically not having teeth until he was old enough to have like you know old people have fake teeth. Um, so he just lived with that. Well, so we're so definitely doing better than they were. Yeah, definitely. I think. Um, well, my dad had a problem with his with wisdom tooth. Uh, about this time last year, and um, it had cracked. Yeah. Um, they like com compact compact. I think it's called when it compacts, and it means that the inside under your gum it like shatters and chooses a direction both well, ways. Yeah. So I think so. What they had to do is they had to take it out. But the what apparent. So the way Dad explained it to me is the way they got it out. Is they, you can't just pull wisdom teeth out. Mm. Um, so they have to crush it in your, whilst it's in your mouth. Yeah. Like, and all you're hearing is like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that's like when they do root canal. You don't know how to root canal, have you? No, my brother has. Yeah, uh, so that's why I'm that's why I'm worried about this two fake because I'm uh, thinking but if this canal wasn't even that bad. It's not that bad. Ollie said it was a it was he would rather have died than had that done. He said so. Well, the, the, it's all about communication with root canal because what they do is they 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 numb your tooth, mm. um, but the numbing agent has different amount of times that it takes to work. And right. the problem that I have, which I think I've explained to you, but other people I'll explain, is that Pain I am out. I'm just uh, do you know what it is? I'm just I have a superpower, which is that dentist numbing agents don't work in my mouth. Well, they do work, but they work two or three hours later. Oh. And a dentist appointment <laughs> is normally half an hour to an hour. Yeah. So what she did the first few times until she figured this out was she just kept injecting more, thinking oh, that I needed Jesus. more of it. So all that would happen is I'd have this painful experience. But the good part was is that three hours later when I got home and I was still in pain, all of a sudden, Gone. I would just like the side of my face it just doesn't exist. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, if you communicate like, oh, um, I can still feel that, then they'll probably try and do something about it. But what they do with the root canal is if you imagine the flat surface of your tooth, they make it like a swimming pool. So they go into the middle and scoop right. all of the hardness out and yeah. just leave a shell if there is a shell on the outside. Uh -huh. Dig down into your gum, pull Jeez. out a, a root, a, a, well, nerve. a nerve, which yeah. is like a, basically like a little wriggly worm almost, um, and then show it to you and say, look at this fucking thing. Uh, <laughs> and then they uh, 
just I don't even know what they do. Fill it up after that, and then you just don't have feeling in that tooth, and they hope it goes well. But this does Jesus. lead me on to a thing that I wanted to talk about, which I didn't actually want to talk about, but now you've said this, it makes me remember. Mm. Um, so we were talking about teeth not really kind of like being um, perfect, perhaps, I guess, with mm. everyone's wisdom teeth not working. And one thing I've thought of is an invention. Um, it's not tooth related, it's hearing related. Okay. So, um, so context, I think I told you last week, maybe that I had water in my ear canal. The fi- the feeling of water in your ear yeah, canal. Yeah. So it's gone now, which is great. Like, God, it's like I can see again, except for I can hear. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but it was awful. And I've been changing what I listen to in life after it. So I used to always listen to Harry Potter when I sleep, which I've discussed before. Yeah. But now what, what I like to do when I, if I'm in the shower or if I'm about to go to sleep, these are the moments where I can actually think, like actually think just my head and my consciousness. Yeah. No Miyako running in like, ah! or anything like that. Like it's like your moments. Yeah. Mm. So I like those moments. And previously I used to listen to things like Harry Potter and just sort of drift away and think about things. But now what I've started doing is I, I want to really focus on my thought and enjoy the moment that I have. And I realized that if I put like rain background, rain sounds on um, and a bit of thunder that I can just sit there and really think. And it got me thinking about the fact that in life we are forced to listen all of the time. Mm. And um, AirPods have kind of changed this, but what I would like is I would like a contact lens that I have inserted into my ear canal, which has settings like a plug-in on my phone, mm. similar to when we do plug-ins for our voices. So we can gate the amount of volume that comes through and things like that. So I could have settings, which is like I'm studying. So if I'm um, in London, Liverpool Street on my laptop, I could just dull out all of that noise and they would know to put some calming music on or something like that or whatever my sort of levels were. Mm. Um, but also in meetings, say if you're in a meeting room, you could tune up the listening to the point where you, like when people are speaking, they're speaking like not through a megaphone, but they are they're, in your head. Like, yeah. Yeah. They're, they're really there. And, and even if you were working remotely, you mm. could do that mm. and you could talk like you were really there. Yeah. And I guess what I'm trying to say is that maybe as technology gets put into our heads in all these different ways and technology becomes part of us, I think that things like hearing and things that we've taken for granted so much, um, you know, everyone always focuses on the cool stuff like chips in your head and all these weird things. But I think there'll be other things that we're not really thinking about that would be quite interesting. So that that was kind of my thing is like the idea of uh, yeah, that'd be just cool. being able to create a blank space. And it, it would also come with your eyes. I mean, imagine if you could just turn your eyes off, like like just not see anything, like deprivation tanks. Um, because the whole point of a deprivation tank is you go into it and you can't see and you feel like and you're... And you can't hear. Yeah, and it's yeah. like, dude, if you actually want to sit there and do some work, like imagine when you're thinking about a product or when you're thinking about whatever, you could just sit there and just zone everything out and just have... I think you, it would make thoughts. me go mad. But then once you take those things away, you could have products. You So you take things away. You could have a product in your head where you, like, design things and put things together just in your imagination. Well, I'd do that anyway. Yeah, I know you do, but I don't do that. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I want to proper, like, just have a sketch pad and just fucking whiz away. I don't... I don't know. It'd you be could cool just get to... a bit of paper out and a pencil and just go for it. But I couldn't, could I? Because there'd be all the background noise. Uh, I'd be seeing all the stuff. I'd be seeing, you know, I'd be, you know, my computer screen, whatever. Uh, yeah, maybe, maybe you're right. So, uh, um, yeah, hearing. So the reason why you might have had um, trouble. So generally, when people have that feeling of, well, actually, not generally. It's, this is a theory of mine. It's not actually water in your ear. Mm. It could be water in your eustachian, eustachian tube, which is a tube that connects the other side of your eardrum to your throat. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I was googling. It could be like just sinus related. 
Yeah, and if they swell up and that if that eustachian tube gets blocked, not blocked but um, closed, and it's it's a very narrow gap, so it's very easy for like if your um, tonsils swell up one day or whatever, it's very easy for that to just like close up, and that will cut off all the high high end because mm. um, it means that the eardrum can't. It's like in a vacuum, basically. It's a, it, it can't um, vibrate at the higher frequencies because it's got no air, air to push through the other side. Um, yeah. So that's 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 one of the reasons. Um, I I I really like that idea. Um, I think the only way that you could do it. The problem is, is that the the hearing function in in the head is um it's it's not as easily manipul- manipulated than say the eyes because the eyes they're kind of somewhat simpler organs than the ears ears are very complex organs um so like you know i could imagine that in the future you could definitely augment reality with contact lenses so you whack a lens in, it's, it's like a flexi, the whole uh, whole space over your iris is LCD or OLED or something. Um, with like a little receiver in it, maybe just an RF receiver. And it's pumping data from your, pumping pixels from your phone to your, to your eyes. Um, that's something that I could definitely see being done fairly easily. Um, now with hearing, it's it's quite a bit harder because your eardrums don't just pick up the sound that's coming through your ear. It's like if you knock on your head, um, that sound isn't going through your ear. It's like reverberating your head, which is in turn reverberating your ear eardrum. Um, so it'd be quite a quite a bit difficult to just build something that goes in your ear the alternative way would be so as you say use like Neuralink um, but the problem is with that is you would need so many threads so many um, endpoints inserted into the head to account for all of the nerves that c- not nerves but synapses that go from the ear the cochlea to the brain so if you imagine as i guess the simplest way i can explain the the ear is the actual hearing mechanism in the ear it's a it looks like a snail and inside the snail is a fluid and hairs like tiny hairs and if you imagine more than 20,000 hairs in that snail-like shape, each one of those hairs is connected by a nerve to the brain, which then interprets it. I don't know if you need all of those nerves connecting to be able to simulate hearing with Neuralink, but that's just like, you know, handkerchief maths. You would need 40,000 so dedicated to hearing. So I wasn't, I wasn't massively assuming that you'd, uh, you'd be able to... I, I thought you could do something on the other side of the thing that hears something. What I was kind of imagining is that that lens that you put in your ear, it would filter stuff going into it and then send out a signal on the other side that is op- like obviously what you want, which would then be heard by your eardrum. Right. What I'm saying is that is definitely possible. My worry is is that the low frequencies, anything below 100 hertz, you would still be able to hear. It wouldn't be able to cancel that out because... Oh, I see. Um, well, actually, it would be a really small speaker, so it probably wouldn't even have the range of 100 hertz mm. below. It would probably be like 400. Anything 400 hertz below, you'd still be able to hear from the outside world, which is quite a lot of things. Like, you know, the train tracks in London, Liverpool Street, when the train's leaving the station, that definitely rumbles at less than 400 hertz. 
<clears throat> so you'd still hear things like that. It might be able to reduce them slightly, but it wouldn't be able to cancel it out completely. The only way you'd be able to cancel the hearing out completely is by something like Neuralink, and you just like totally tell the brain, don't listen to your ears, listen to this. There you go, guys. We've uh, done 20% of the work. If you want to take that one on, there you go. We'll, uh, we'll be happy to claim some royalties. <clears throat> so... Um, I don't know if you've got something to go on next, but um, I was shopping today, yeah, which is why I was a bit absent from messaging you back, which I always am absent, to be fair. Um, and it's, a, as always, a pleasant experience shopping in Tesco on a Tuesday. The day after all the pro pro products come in, which means the shelves are, like, stacked amazingly and nobody goes on a Tuesday like the parking spaces, like there's so many available parking spaces, so much so that I could turn in. There was, you know, it's lovely when you get this. Um, it's the small things in life that make people happy, and this makes me happy. You've got car parking spaces, and you just so happen to drive into the car park down one of the lanes, and you've got three spaces free. So you go in the middle one? Go straight in the middle. Like yeah, no yeah, yeah. worries, no no worrying about someone. The problem yeah. is, is when you get back to your car, and some arseholes parked next to you, and there's like loads of other spaces. And you're like, well, like, like, come on, just you could have just given me that. You could have. I was only here for an hour. You could have given me the luxury of not having to think about your car being there. Mm. Now I have to think about it. Um, so anyway, I was I was as I was walking around, I was thinking about um, there's. It seems like on a Tuesday, every time I go on a Tuesday, there's. It might just be the times that we're in. It seems like there's just as many clicking not uh, like delivery packers as there are normal customers. So. I don't know if you have it. In, I don't know if Sainsbury's do um, delivery, but the, the delivery service that Tesco do, I can't remember what they call it, online shopping, whatever it is. Um, they have people that are in the store that work for Tesco that go around packing basically crates of all of the stuff that the customers ordered. And on a Tuesday, it seems like there are as many of those packers as there are customers. And it got me thinking about the online shopping experience for, for groceries and food shopping in general. Um, and it's a question that I wanted to ask you. Have you ever done it? And there's a follow-on question. Have you ever done, like, delivery um yeah i've done delivery i've done <coughs> click and collect and i've done normal shopping mm. i've never done delivery so when you um what is the state of delivery at the moment is it like do you create a shopping list or do you like what well, how, how how does it work like are you given like a basically like a virtual store like like a so, normal website yeah. and you just go add to basket, add to basket. Yeah, like you're going to Topshop only. Um, I haven't explored these things, but I do believe that most of them offer lists, um, repeat purchase options and like uh. a sort of format what you like. Um, and maybe this is on offer this time because you like this. I think some are probably better than others. <clears throat> Um, so, and then you just choose your stuff, you choose a time slot, you pay for the delivery and it arrives and they give you your stuff and they, anything they can't give you, they say, here's a substitute and you say, no, thanks. Cause it's three pounds more expensive. Um, and at what point does that happen? The substitutes, can you explicitly uh, say, I don't like, if this doesn't exist, like if it's out of stock, I don't want to substitute. Like, can you say that on the checkout? Like for that item? No, nah, they'll just say when they get there, they'll just say on the door, they'll just say, um, this is a substitute. And then he clocks off that the transaction amount was three pounds less than what's expected. And then at the end of the day, you'll get charged 70 pounds instead of 73 pounds. Uh, so payment isn't done until 
you've received the shopping? No. Uh... I believe so. I believe so. I believe that's the case. Otherwise, they would just have to refund you it back separately, but I don't seem to remember them ever doing that. Right. So, so I, I was thinking, right, like, so I go shopping every th- roughly th- every three weeks. Um, but the things that it gets to the end of the three weeks when I uh, like after I've been shopping, two weeks have passed. We're on the last week before I go shopping again. And you, you need a few bits and bobs. We need a few going. bits and bobs, and it always turns. It always seems to be that we're buying like green vegetables or like you know. I eat anything that's not potatoes because potatoes they last forever. Um, yeah, the the shelf life on most vegetable vegetables doesn't. It's like a week. It doesn't match up with your full shopping load. Yeah, hmm. I think that's a common thing for people. That that's where people end up doing weekly shopping and getting their meals, and then they just go out next week and do it. But you do end up like the the more you expose yourself to a shopping visit the more you will spend money so trying to avoid weekly shopping is preferable but then you incur the vegetable problem yeah so i think there's a solution to the vegetable problem there's two solutions that i've come up with i've I've, I've got one but yeah you do yours first one of them the first one is let's have green grocers back like get green like get green grocers back that's the campaign um i want to be able to walk down the road and there'd be a like there's a butcher down the road from me. I want there to be a greengrocer there. Um, but at the same time, I understand that like it's not really a feasible business anymore. Like, I think I was going to say, I think a lot of places do still have a greengrocer. I think we're living in a part of the world where a lot of people are so modernized that they go to shopping places and there are so many shopping places of course you go to them but i think when i've gone around the uk or even in london a lot of areas a lot of shops are green grocers there's a lot of vegetable shops available especially in different cultures as well in more multicultural areas yeah i suppose so uh, yeah and you're definitely right because like in dalston there's fucking there's hundreds of green and then so, so what i was going to say is that the counterbalance is and something I'm going to start doing is using farm shops more. That's That and was my next solution. Yeah. So I, I'm like researching at the moment. And one of the questions I was going to talk to you about is like off the grid living and, and growing mm. vegetables and things. Uh-huh. Um, but I really want to move towards, I want to move myself away from centralized food points. And what I mean by that is I want to limit my exposure to big chains like Sainsbury's and Tesco's. Yeah. Um, so when we move out, we will have an Aldi, a Tesco's, a Sainsbury's and another one, I think all about 10 minutes from us. They're all grouped really closely for some reason. Yeah. Um, but I will have a farm shop that's 10 minutes up the road and I'll have a garden where I can grow vegetables and I want to try and transition my meats and my vegetables from the farm shop and my garden and I want to limit the other stuff because the other stuff... It's all bullshit, it really. It really is stuff you don't need. Yeah. Like, even a pasta sauce, you can make that with tomatoes. Yeah, yeah. You don't need to go to Sainsbury's to get it. And and if you just learn how to do that, you'll enjoy it so much more. It will be cheaper and it will taste nicer. That, and it'll be, and it'll be healthier. Agreed. And there are so many things like that. It's like half the time you go shopping in Sainsbury's and... 35 you do a 60 pound shop that's going to last you a week and a half for a family of three okay yeah half of your money is those final six or seven aisles when you're just wanking around yeah. like just choosing things just yeah. like yeah you're literally glory shopping like yeah. when you like when you scroll through asos and you think oh i'd look nice in that yeah i'd love to turn that into a turd that's what everyone's doing <laughs> and uh, like I just I don't think it's needed, so no, I'm gonna yeah, I'm gonna focus, and I do do it more when I go to Sainsbury's. I focus more on getting like some decent different types of meat for Claudia to make a few different interesting meals with, and I know that like because we we like a few different types of meats, like we like ribs and stuff like that, and she can do a lot of Asian meals with those, but they're quite expensive, and I used to care about that, but now I'm just like, dude, if I'm spending five quid on ribs, it's five quid that I'm not spending on chocolate buttons. Exactly, like, exactly. Um, but the I did want to talk to you about the off the grid living thing, which is um, <clears throat> that um, 
I've been looking at people who are living remotely in places like Wales, like that Chris Harbour guy on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. Um, and wow, like, has it blown my mind? It's the tough idea. work. It's um, it's it, yeah, he it's makes huge. it look easier than it is. He does, sure. and his is if you have time, chaps, um, do have a look at Chris Harbour off the grid on YouTube. Uh, he does have a tremendous toolkit to get started with as well. Um, yeah. Which is kind of, it's like a barrier to entry, which I'm looking at, just thinking I could never do this. Um, you'd, be I think, you'd be surprised. I think when I'm older, I'd like to try it. And I think when I'm older, it would be easier to do it unless it's regulated against. Um, no, uh, no, I don't think it'll ever be. Re- in Western culture, I don't think those things would ever be um I don't know, prevented. mate. I don't no, know, mate. Can't, You're a bit off. Be. It can't be. No, there's a lot, because if, there's if a lot you... of things at the moment that I didn't think could be regulated that are being regulated. Like what? Well, like this whole freaking. Uh, this is another topic I want to move into as well. Um, let's let's move into the other topic, and what, we can. What you're uh, saying is, is like being homeless, being illegal. Uh, yeah, yeah, basically, yeah. But and what you're saying is that you, in order to prevent people from. Like, in order for there to be regulation to prevent people from going off grid, mm. you would basically need to prevent people from owning land. land. Yeah. Well, yeah. the 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 cost of land, I think, will go up. <laughs> Mate, yeah, that's 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 also like true. Like finding land with water on that's fertile and has woods. Yeah, that, um, they're very rare. They are very rare. You know. But wow, I'm watching this guy and he's just blowing my mind. Like, yeah, it's literally. crazy. And the idea that he wakes up every day. And he just has his list of things to do to improve his own life mm-hmm. and well-being. It is it's just brilliant, it's isn't it? refreshing as fuck to see. Yeah. Um, so check that out, people. Uh, I don't really have much to say about it other than um, when I move out, I'm going to try and get like a, a two by four planting wood um, square you can or just rectangle. Make one. You can just yeah, make yeah, one. yeah. I yeah, know that's what I mean by get like just get the timber and and whack it together and put some soil in it. And then I will grow some things, and I will also try and erect my own greenhouse. Um, a proper so, green, like glass greenhouse. Yeah, a proper greenhouse. And I was wondering if I could build that. I was wondering if I could do it. Have you seen his greenhouse? Because his yeah, greenhouse it's crazy. is crazy. Fucking you, looks like a Hogwarts greenhouse. It's amazing. Need, he like, well, he does that style on purpose, but um, yeah. Well, mine would be like, you know what I mean? It, it's just like uh, you, you need it'd be a like lot... a, a tent made out of cling film. Like, uh, <laughs> yeah, you need a lot of experience woodworking to be able to do what he does. Um, I have done a, I've done a fair bit with my granddad, but then I I remember a lot of what I did with my granddad wasn't really like chisel based stuff. Yeah, it, 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 yeah, and that's where carpentry kind of like mm. if you can understand how to do that stuff, a lot of the stuff that I see him doing, it's like oh I'd do that differently, and he's just got a chisel out and made it work. Yeah. and and I think he's got a good level of uh, of appreciation for that. Um, so I think I think in a previous life he was a, a lift mechanic or an, something like that. Mm. Um, which means he's got. He's definitely had some sort of background in building and stuff. Definitely. Yeah, he's got an engineering mind. Yeah. Um, which I think is a must. Uh, yeah. If if to to live the sort of lifestyle that he lives, it's not a must. It's you need if you're going if you're going to live off grid, you need and I think you are this person. Um, I'm not saying that you're not. I'm just saying for anyone that wants to try it you kind of need nothing's given to you like mm. you can't just go to a shop and buy electricity like yeah, 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 yeah. it doesn't work like that you you're like 50 miles from a shop mm. um you need to make your own and you, and that means that you need to learn how to well the first thing is learning how to research a lot of people and i feel like uni fails universities fail people in that area learning how to research on your own is a very difficult it's not a difficult skill it's it's an easy skill once you know how to do it um but it's an important skill that i don't think a lot of people have mm. um and it's interesting i was i had this that interview um for this role <clears throat> which maybe we can speak about after the podcast but one of the question one of there's an interesting question um that one of the guys asked me which was um what what do you do outside of work to like <clears throat> progress yourself as a PM? <clears throat> and um, 
and he gave some examples like workshops, blah, 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 blah like courses. And I, I just, I come straight out and I said like, dude, I, I don't, I will never go on a workshop. Like it's a promise I've made to myself. I am never, if I end up going on a workshop, it's not going to be my money that's being paid for it. Um, yeah, it's, it's, <clears throat> do you know what I mean? All those people climbing for fucking certificates, like Jesus yeah, Christ. like the internet is like Wikipedia alone. And I, I hate, I what I hate most is how universities and schools stigmatize Wikipedia as something bad yeah no 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 it's like oh you can't use a quote from wikipedia because you haven't dug deep enough for it yeah it's like what do you mean like wikipedia <laughs> do, is do the you know, most oh, amazing so, thing do you want to know what the funniest thing is right so at uni you have to like when you do references yeah <clears throat> you have to find supporting material okay i'll tell you right now anyone who's at university anyone who's doing any sort of research i will get you your quotes what you do is yeah. you go to a little magical thing called Google Books. Uh, go on yeah, Google yeah, Books, yeah. okay, and you type in, okay. So what imagine, imagine, know? imagine you're doing a, a thesis on how Harry Potter and the <clears throat> is similar to uh, um, yeah, you're the way. Cutting out. You're cutting out. Yeah, I'm not sure out. what it is. It seems like you're pressing a button or something, like a push to talk button. Uh, is it any better now? Yes, it's right now. Sorry, I sorry, sorry I interrupted your moved, flow. I, it's fine. I moved a bit closer to my mic, maybe. Uh, yeah. So imagine you're doing um, a thesis on Harry Potter and how uh, the houses are like um, similar to democratic parties in the UK or something like that. Mm -hmm. You just go into Google Books and you type in Harry Potter houses, government, and then you find all of these books that have written those three words in the same sort of sentence. Yeah. You go through them and like, yeah, you pick like five or six of them. And you're like, can I make that work? Can I make that work? Sometimes none of them will work. And what you do instead is you change your point and you just write to their point. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. But, <laughs> but you've got it. Do you know what I mean? And, and that's the whole point. It's like that. You're, I remember that's, doing this. This is what essays are about is you're not really, you're just ticking the box. Mm, you're just ticking mm. the box. And that's what education needs to kind of change. Maybe is that yeah. like, not necessarily ticking a box sort of thing. I don't know. Uh, it, it, university needs... So the whole... I, I, I don't know what the idea of university is. I don't know whether it's just like some like corrupt um, institution that's just like pumping money and creating debt. Like I feel that that's all it is right now. I think I think back in the day, like imagine you're coming out of like the industrial period, and most of your parents are like used to working in Uneducated, steel and stuff like yeah, that, yeah. yeah. And like you go to university because you want to be the person in the family who knows something. And and actually at that time, like knowledge wasn't so shareable, so it was more mm. valuable. Mm. Um, I think now we almost have an abundance of knowledge accessible to people to the point where you don't need to actually access it. Yeah. It's like someone else has figured that out. Like, yeah, yeah. do I need to go and learn it right now? No. Um, <laughs> so it, it's kind of an interesting point. We've got all this information and then no no point in fucking like, using it. Yeah. yeah, You can use it, but just, just don't consider it your responsibility to figure it out because it yeah. will be there for you. Exactly. Um, and, it, uh, you know, that's, that's kind of our little podcast slant is to ask questions, I guess. Yeah. Um, I don't I donate to Wikipedia. Oh, of course you do, mate. Someone's got to like. <laughs> well, there you go, there you go, guys. It's Woody doing it. Don't worry. <laughs> you'd be surprised. They they make a lot of money from donations. I bet they do, but I find it really weird and things like that. I find a lot of um, I find a, I find a lot of those optional spending things interesting. I don't know. So this is another thing. Um, I I'm more inclined to give my money to something, a project that has come up with a model, not even a model, they might not even be doing very well, but they don't, they're not asking you to pay for it. What they're asking is, is for a donation. Those projects are the ones oh. that I will immediately I go, said... I don't, even if I don't use it, I'm going to give you money because I, you know, you, you're working hard on something and you're providing this for, to, for free for people 
and it's like some people like you can't even afford it like but they might be getting value out of it and making their own business off of your software so um, i so said this on uh i had this interesting twitter interaction over the last sort of 24 48 hours mm. which was another topic i wanted to move into was twitter regret um <laughs> but so Guy tweets out, he's a PM for his own product. I've got a ton of new great features for blah, 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 his product. XYZ. Custom custom Google fonts, background images, avatar profiles, so much work to do. First comment was, so what are you going to do then? Um, no, no, wait, no, that wasn't it. First comment was, don't forget to make some of them premium features you can view and monetize, um, e.g. putting watermarks on the basic ones, but then um, having a premium product where... And, and I replied to that comment saying, premium features and paywalls are trash. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. So, so... It's so true, though. It's so uh, fucking Ernest, true. Ernest Mulders said back to me, so what do you mean then? What other way can he ask for money without putting Make a, a fucking up? good product that people are willing to pay for. I said, there are many products that give value to a user free of any paywall. Such as such products are also capable of generating revenue. These are the products of the future. Future audiences is, won't be accept, as accepting of paywalls as we are today. Even today, we aren't really accepting it. So um, then the guy who owned the product noticed our conversation and said, Hey, Tim. Could you give me an example of exactly what you mean? How can I generate revenue without charging users? And I said to him, I don't know how you can generate revenue without charging users. I do know that it's possible to generate revenue without charging users. Yeah. And that was it. Yeah. Um, but, oh, God, I was like, fuck me. And, and, and the main thing I wanted to talk about here was... This actually stressed me out, this Twitter discussion. I'm sure um, it did. I wish you'd invited me onto it. I would have fucking rinsed them. Yeah, I, 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 might, I might at you in it because uh, I hate people who are just fucking chatting away. It's like, And I did the same thing. It's like having that slant of like, I know best. Yeah. Um, but, the, but the main thing is kind of uh, another thing which I've been doing, which is like, so our wedding company finally gave us the refund back. After, oh, they did. It's good news. Yeah. And we'd been waiting weeks and weeks and months. weeks. It's been and months. Yeah, months. And then when they said they did it, they were like, yeah, we've done it. And then a week later, I was like, no, you fucking haven't. And they were like, oh, we'll make sure it happens this afternoon. Didn't happen. Mm. And then next day, I was like, geez, just do it. Yeah, Literally, yeah. I'm yeah. going to stay on the phone. Can you do it? Can you make sure it goes through? Yeah. And, oh, I was just, I was <sighs> mind blown. Like That's a good chunk of money that you got there. Yeah, when it came back, but... Um, is it back? Is it actually in your account? Yeah, yeah. It's okay, good. Um, but the point oh, was is that, that off, yeah. straight <laughs> afterwards, I could probably... I might be able to get my Google up. I'm not even sure. I can kind of tell you what the online review was, but as soon as the money came back, I went to their website on Google and left a review. And I gave them one star, yeah. and I basically ranted out about how I think that a wedding is an emotional transaction... And that through COVID, I basically got to see into the wedding industry and establish that Toxicity. I am just a consumer. Yeah. And obviously, that's the reality of it. That's all you can want. Yeah. But on the same level, I would expect the customer service to be offered to be of a heightened level because of the emotions that are involved. Absolutely. And I didn't receive that. Right. Um, so basically, the ending of it was COVID saved my wedding. Um, that was what I signed off with. Anyway, so I gave them one star and um, it had been up for about four hours and I got an email through from Google that said, thanks for leaving the review. Mm. And I looked at the review and I looked at it and I was like, I don't want to represent myself in this way regardless of how much I hate the, hate this company. Um, I don't... Why, why was I so trigger happy to write something online? And it left me in this like voided space and I just deleted the review. I just deleted it. Really? Yeah. Cause I feel like, and even, even earlier, like I, I just feel like. Dude, well it's, it's interesting you say that because when you was talking about that Twitter conversation that you had, I mean, I don't use Twitter, but mm. I would love to just make, like use my personal Twitter and just, just destroy people, just cause chaos. Yeah, right. I th I think ultimately, I think I, love I that. Yeah, yeah, I don't care. I think the problem is, is I'm attacking people from a stance of not actually thinking that I know best. 
I'm just doing it. I'm just trash talking a lot. That's of the time. what I want to do. I just like yeah. You know. And I guess there's no comp- there's no problem to it. But then I looked at my Twitter profile and I was like, it said Just Swim Cast, uh, and my name is like Just Swim Tim. I was like, I guess you could probably figure out who I was if you Googled Tim and Woody. I was just like, I, right. I think I can impart more wisdom on the world than being so negative at these up. Op- a lot of the time I'm triggered into this negative, like, I'm never like, oh, yeah, you girl, you go, well done for your, uh, you know, your achievement that you've done. You're such an amazing person. Like, I'm never like that. But if I see something I disagree <laughs> with, bloody hell. Like, Straight on it. Where's I, my axe? You know I, what I mean? <laughs> I think that's, um, I think that's just how, like, British people are, in a way. Yeah. We, um, we, we revel in the um, pessimism of the world. Yeah. You don't get very far. This is the you don't, going but back it's, to it's, life, it's, of Brian, it's life of Brian. Life of Yeah, it's satisfying when you um when you're writing it. It's satisfying. Yeah, but like I could can... I could go through my whole Twitter and just like it's literally like these are the tweets that I didn't delete after writing. Like <laughs> <laughs> I, used to, I used to do it on the way in from work as well. I'd sit there and like if the train was late, oh mate, train service. I'd find the Twitter and I'd be at them straight away. Like <laughs> like. And I, I've enjoyed it from time to time. I've I've done a few funny ones. Uh, like a few of my tweets have at least got five or six likes, and that's made me feel really happy. So uh, but that's what Twitter's all about, isn't it? Getting you those likes, give you a bit of dopamine hit. Yeah, and then uh, throw you in the trash when your next one doesn't. That's it. Just appease the algorithms. That's it. Um, so there was uh, another topic, not to dominate all the topics here, uh, but Gunu anyway. Um, so I feel like a lot of what we've been talking about in a lot of our podcasts is privacy and, uh, something I keep saying, which is the walls are closing in. Uh Um, and you know, the global narrative of news events, call them individual news events that have no interlink or, uh, or conspiracy triangle group behind orchestrating it all or whatever. Um, but I've been trying to wrap my head around this whole Meghan Markle thing recently. Um, mm-hmm. The old Meghan Markle, um, the elephant in the room, uh, the black person in the uh, houses. Royal family. Well, yeah, not the Houses of Parliament, the, the royal family. Um, and I just think it's amazing how it's all unfolded. And I think it's really interesting to ask different people on their opinion, like if they had to be Team Megan or Team um, Royal Family and stuff like that. And it's so funny because so I'm I'm Team Megan just to be open right now. Like I don't think anything is wrong. I think there's probably really difficult side to being in the Royal Family. I also think they've got a brilliant life. But I also agree that in this day and age, especially if you're not going to be the king or queen, like fuck it, do what you want. Um, and especially the racism stuff that's come out from it all, I think like, oh God, like, I think it's such a, it's like perfect irony that, um, they've ended up in this situation as a royal family, like, oh shit, is is there going to be a black baby? Like, oh shit, this is going (laughs) to, dude, are are we ready for this? Like, what does this mean for our PR? Like all these questions they're having to ask, which they really shouldn't because it it, it makes no fucking difference whatsoever. In fact, we should just make him king for the bands. Um, (laughs) so true. but, But, um, one thing that I've found is that in co- conjunction with this has been the murder of, I don't know her name, Sarah Everard, maybe? Yeah. Um, which I haven't dabbled in too much because I find like a lot of feminist events are really, and it's not just a feminist event and I don't want to cause any offence, but I don't like reading about people dying. It just makes me sad. Um so I haven't read into it too much, but yeah, there was I've one interesting thing that happened, which was that at her funeral, not funeral, at her celebration of her life event, um, the princess, what's the other one? Kate Middleton? Yep. Is she a princess? Yeah, she must be. I guess princess. So, oh, no, she's a duchess. The duchess. Yeah. Duchess uh, Middleton. Uh, she arrived at the um, funeral thing. Um, Such a perfect name for a duchess, isn't it? Duchess Middleton. Yeah, it's like yeah. such a pure British name, English name. Yeah. Um, and she arrived um, without a mask. Um, okay, not that she has to be wearing a mask. She's royal family, mate. Yeah, but it's interesting because I feel like any politician 
or um, royal person at the moment, if they're seen in public, they always wear a mask just because you don't want to be caught without one. Exactly. Now, why would Kate Middleton want to attend this event and not wear a mask? Uh, just to show her face, isn't it? Make sure people know that she's there. Make sure people know she's there. Why would people want to? Why would why would she want people to know she was there? Make the royal family look better. Exactly. And doesn't that just make people think the royal family are fucking dicks? Because all they're doing is uh, like this woman's died. The thing is, and they're Tim, like, oh, like, let's just turn up and show face and yeah, like drop uh, some flowers off, and we'll get some good PR. The thing is, it works. Yeah, Pe- I know it works. Aren't like and that's the you. tragedy. They don't see through the yeah. shit. And like I'm seeing, the, I'm seeing there, and she's like proper paused there for a minute to look at the oh, flowers, yeah. and like I bet in her head she's like fucking counting, One, and that, two, yeah, 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 thirty seconds was agreed. Then we'll get back to the car, mm. and I can get the fuck out of London and get back to my normal life. Yeah, and I just thought like uh, I don't know enough about it. Maybe she's great. Maybe, maybe Meghan Markle is like you know, maybe she's the head of Illuminati and she's the reason the world is wrong. But like it's just such a fucking sham. And then the next day the newspapers were like, oh look, the, forget about the fact that this woman's died and you know that there was a huge riot that took place at her um celebration of her life i keep saying the wrong word um event but they skimmed over that and had a picture of freaking kate standing there and i was just like oh like this is it isn't it yeah polish my nutsack like (laughs) yeah i just people it works man like people People buy into it. People buy into, ah, uh, ah, oh, isn't that nice? Kate when they don't see through, like, <laughs> they don't look at the reason. Like, why the, the, has she attended? The, the best bit was um, a lot of people, like, if they are pro um, the royal family side, the, one of the things they'll say is, oh, they're just like, they're just, it's disrespectful. You don't do that to the royal family. You don't, you don't expose the royal family. It's like, why the fuck not, mate? Like, yeah, why not? W- w- what yeah. makes it like, yeah, we respect them. Because they are on a level which should be superior to us. And if they are not superior to us and somehow being, you know, um, the the good Samaritan and trying to save the world and all this stuff, then, like, what? Yeah, no, what I totally to agree. Um, and, 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 oh, there's another, uh, unless you have more, do you no, have yeah, more, Meghan on. Markle? Because no, there's another thing, which is, like, to get back to the walls are closing in. So we have this huge thing of, Women don't feel safe on the streets. Mm. Um, And I feel like we're being pushed into narratives where we're being told to champion things that are actually what people in the government and everything like that want us to challenge. Um, uh, You know, we don't feel safe on the streets. Okay, well, we'll put CCTV facial recognition everywhere. Does that make you feel better? You know? (laughs) Yeah. Because that's where it will go. That's literally where it will go. We'll be sat here in two years' time and people will be saying... Um, like, why is there so much CCTV facial recognition everywhere? Uh, two years ago, I used to be able to do this, this, and this, and now I don't feel like I can do it. And they won't remember the fact that they sat there every day saying that, like, and I get it that a woman doesn't feel safe on the street walking at night. I'll be entirely honest, like, I, I, I don't I, feel I, safe walking I, on the street. That's what I've been thinking all week. It's yeah. like, dude, like, I'm looking over my shoulder. Yeah. Trust me, I get out of bed at night and I walk to the bathroom across the hallway and I'm, re- I'm ready for that paranormal experience. I'm, just, I'm scared of the fucking world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And obviously, yeah, there are more events that happen towards females and stuff like that. I don't really know enough about it. Like, I, I mean, no, yeah, I, appreciate I just don't, that. I don't think that it's, it's something, you know, it, and, and I, know, I know that a lot of feminists haven't said, I want CCTV facial recognition. They'd probably say things like, we need better education around this sort of stuff from young to understand that, you know, females have to be respected and all this stuff, yeah? Um, which, yeah, might help. Um, so but, here's, here's my issue with um, the idea of... And it's not an issue. I mean, I, I, there are parts of feminism that I 100% stand by. Um, there are other parts where it's it, it it boggles my mind a bit so like um the idea so like feminism started off like why well, it started eight like a long time ago like 100 years ago easily maybe more a little bit more um and the idea was is women wanted equality um during the time like maybe just 20 years before the sort of rise of feminism, 
um, women probably were protected a lot more than they are now because, you know, men ran the world back then and they saw women as like... They were trophied. Yeah, they were trophied in a way. Um, And then feminism came along and said, no, we want... We want equality, like hundred percent equality, like fifty-fifty. Whatever yeah. men gets, we want, and uh, that come that obviously brought in a load of benefits for women: the right to vote, um, loads of loads of things, mm. uh, the right to work. What they didn't anticipate was they would also lose the protection that they had from men. Not that the women need to be protected from men. Um, by men but but this is it that's it that's the example isn't it you you want something and you ask for it but you don't consider the consequences exactly and there's so much of that going on right now it's like that cancel culture topic like um well we don't want this so we'll get rid of it but what are you going to be left with exactly. when you've got rid of those things now I'm and will all... you be happy with that yeah i'm all for it i like i'm all for like women having equal opportunity for sure like 100 mm. percent um and i i don't want to protect women like i don't want to be the i definitely don't want to be the person that um if women think they can protect themselves they want 100 percent equality 50 50 if somebody attacks a woman it's not my problem like that and i think a lot of men are like that now because we've sort of been pushed into this idea that oh Women have equal rights. Therefore, I don't need to, you know, I shouldn't be gentlemanly. And if there's a thief attacking a woman, that I should do something because I'm a man in power. Like, that doesn't exist anymore. Um, like, I'm all for that. But at the same time, that, that as you say, that comes with consequences. Um so it's a it's a very difficult time being a female and a male. And and can I just add that yeah. if there's any girls who posted a status that was um I can't remember the sort of status they put, but it's something like uh don't do XYZ, educate your son. Yeah? Mm. And it's like it's like yeah. It just makes me feel like it's just like generalizing men so fucking yeah, much. I know, yeah. And then I, I saw one one that was a really good reply to it, which is uh, what men really want as a picture. And uh, on the internet, as any meme is, when it says what men really want, it's normally a picture of some big boobs or something like that. Yeah. But it was this uh, this woman standing there and then she had her children around her and she was in a house and then the man was outside of the picture and he had his arms like wrapped around that picture hugging it. Mm. And it's like, yeah, that's that's all I fucking want. Like, yeah. I think there's a lot of men that just grow up and they kind of like just... We, uh, like I think men actually have quite a motherly instinct, but it's just portrayed in a more long-term vision than a short-term I'm going to hug my child and feed my child and do all of these motherly things. I think we yeah. we, we provide a landscape in a way that exactly. um and and fuck me like it's 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 never fucking talked about like it's never talked about. No one talks about back in Birmingham back in the industrial age when they were like mining steel and forging iron every day and like yeah, the women were stuck at home and they didn't have rights to do things. But, but they being weren't a... stuck down in a fucking pit, like breathing in smog every day, coming yeah. home black face and black hands with blisters on their hands yeah. from working and, too hard. And it's not that we did more. And it's not that you did less. And no. it's not that you did more. And it's not that we did less. Yeah. It's just that we were born with dicks. You were born with vaginas and and different circumstances cause different outcomes. Yeah. Just like a dog lives X amount of years and might find an owner, but a frog is probably not going to find an owner because they're not as desirable. That's how they kind of live their lives. Yeah. I go back to the root cause of this. I said to my drama teacher, who was a feminist, if you had to go into a jungle, if someone took you into a jungle and you had no idea about what animals are, what humans are, um, but you did have an idea of the planet Earth and you were to look at a human that is a man and put it next to a female and say, 
which one is going to survive best in this world, you would say, well, probably the man. Just like if you put a tiger next to a thingy, you might say probably a tiger. You'd yeah, choose yeah. traits and you'd say that person will survive better. And that means that since we've evolved, we've evolved on the scale that society has been started towards us. It doesn't mean in 100 years, 200 years, 300 years' time... That might change. Yeah. We might yeah. not even need dicks anymore. It might just all be asexual females. Yeah, just IVF everywhere. Just yeah. you know, grow the semen, IVF, off away you yeah. go. At which point I won't be the last man sat there being like, but we need men. We'll just yeah, be like, yeah. times right, are fucking changed. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, but yeah, things are difficult and we need to make this, the, the, uh, I mean, we need to make the streets safer for women. I, I, I just, don't I, fucking I, go out. Like, uh, <laughs> I don't go out at 10 o'clock. Don't fucking go out the house. I was going to ask my mum, I was like, mum, when was the last time you were walking down the street and you didn't feel safe because you are a woman? And I think she'd just be like, never. Yeah. Never. Yeah. Like are you walking home for, like are you walking down like through Stratford at two in the morning? Yeah. Like what what are you what, what the fuck are you doing? Where are you? Yeah. Why like, are you out? <laughs> yeah. Someone shot a gun, I've walked in the way. Oh so, no, it's not my fault. Like So um But it's definitely not Sarah's fault she's dead, just to clarify, we're not saying that. It's just like it's yeah. a fucked up world and you can't really fix all of these things, but it's not worth sacrificing your privacy for walking home at night and feeling safe. Yeah. It's not worth CCTV recognition. No. I saw someone saying um, a curfew for men. That was in the government. That was in the Houses of Parliament. House a of Lords. Curfew House of Lords. A, a curfew for men. Um, so, yeah, I mean, she... Just fucking she, crazy. There was an article in the news, uh, Sky News, about her saying that, and it wasn't that she actually wanted to implement it. She was just wanting to make a statement. That it, like, you know have an ambitious statement to get her name in the papers, basically. Well, because that's but what it was politicians a good point. is about. Oh, it was a fair uh, point that she had. But at the same time... Was like, it fair? What was fair about it? It it highlighted... It, it sort of added to the uh, idea that women don't feel safe. I mean, that's the only value it had. Um, but it's a fair... I I think it's a fair point that she made. But it's not... Can you imagine it? Men are banned and it's like you look out the window, it's just women fighting on the Going, streets yeah, all yeah. night long. <laughs> so this is what I was going to say is generally the reason... Um, so there's a couple of things that I want to talk about here. Men... I really don't want to generalise here, but sometimes there are just facts in the world that you can look up. Um... And the best place to look up these types of things are published statements and factoids by charities that provide support for a particular industry. Um, and most of the time, and people might say, yeah, well, women don't have an equal representation in work. Therefore, this particular cohort of people, whatever. Generally, the consensus in charities is that men are more, there are more men applying for money to help themselves and help their families than women are. And there's a bit of a debate within the, the charity sector in that charities are worried that women are feel like they don't deserve the money because they're not getting as many applicants like applications for for money um i don't know the answer to that question i'd like to think that it women do feel that they can apply for money and they should go out and like if someone's giving out money go fucking get it like don't think about oh do i really deserve it maybe someone else should deserve it more than I do men don't think like that if there's fucking money going and you're in trouble go fucking apply for it like just go take it and I think that speaks to the kind of maybe it speaks I haven't done you know I'm not a psychologist here but um it speaks to the idea that m maybe men are willing to risk a lot more of their pride in order to 
ensure the survival of themselves and the family that they have. Um, does that resonate with you? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Um, and so one of the reasons why the streets don't feel safe is because, and let's take East London as an example. Um, you don't often see women in these, you know, postcode wars of drugs. Yeah. It's always men. Um, like 99% of the time it's, it's men doing the risky business. Yeah. Um, and that's because they need, they know that, or they feel that they don't have any other option. And so they must, it's a, it's a must inside them to risk life imprisonment just to survive um, and support the people around them. Mm -hmm. um, which generally means that if, if men are doing generally the more risky jobs because they're willing to put more of their life at risk, mm. then of course there are going to be bad men out there. And they're going like, to commit more crimes. And they're going to commit more crimes. So it's not that... I don't th I think there's this... Um, the idea that men are bad uh, within, within feminism. I think the majority of men aren't bad. But there are obviously people... Mm. There are some men. It's just that, that society isn't perfect, and yeah. and and it has effects on women and men, and there are cracks in those little crevices of yeah. the society's plan, and people fall into them, just like some women fall into them, some men fall into them as well. And God, if there's more men doing these things, doesn't that actually say that maybe the society sexual skew is actually not in favour of men at all because it's forcing them into these situations? Not mm. that you're forced into the situation. I think we need to clarify here that murder of a woman is not the same as some of these things that we're saying that men are getting pulled up on, okay? Yeah. yeah. And, and, and I don't think that there's a scale there's where any no of it's acceptable. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of other things there's no excuse for. Yeah. But um, I think <clears throat> one of the interesting things I wanted to say is that... Um, if you kill or kidnap or rape someone, it's a crime, yeah? Mm. It's a crime that you're committing and you're actively knowing that it's a crime before you do that, whilst you do that, and after you do that. Correct. So be careful how you... If you're asking for some sort of protection, be careful what you're asking for because any new law or rule or anything that they can bring to try and help you is most likely not going to help me. Or help you because if if we bring in a law that men can't do this to try and stop nighttime crime, the person who is going to kill or kidnap a woman Still is going to do it. That law means nothing to them. Yeah. On the same way that murdering someone means nothing to them. Yeah, they're still and they do will it. find a way. Yeah. Just yeah, law. So so don't ask for a law. Right. Like don't fucking take it to the House of Parliament. Take it, take it to discussion. Have the discussion. Um, and one thing I was saying earlier is that I know we always talk about guests. Maybe we should, like, I know a few people who probably feel passionate about the opposite side. Yeah. Um, maybe get a couple of, of girls on or a, a guy and a girl who both feel strongly about this and uh, and we could air it all out. And maybe we'd figure out that actually, you know, we're freaking deluded and we're on the wrong side. But I, I feel like there's there must be a reason why feminism, like, comes to a point where it stops working. And it's almost because, like, yeah, it's... Uh, yeah. So the interesting thing about feminism is, and the ideology behind it, is there's there's not an end. There's not an end. I'm not, exactly, not saying there should be exactly. an end, but there, that's why there's... no one identifies with it. That's why women don't identify with feminism. A lot of women do, but a lot of women don't. No, nah, not a lot of women. A few women do. A lot is almost you're, you're telling me like 60 70 percent of women would identify with the idea of feminism. I'm saying a lot of women do, a lot of women don't. I you think can take few, that as 50 yeah. 50. No, you can but take it I as think less. the few that champion it and discuss it and really try and push further and progress oh, yeah, feminism are, yeah. are people that the people that they are representing don't identify with them. It's like a religion yeah. trying to champion what should be right for me and i'm nothing to do with that religion 
that's the level that I see it at. And I think that a lot of people on the same scale, like I see all of the, it comes down to the same thing. When you watch chat shows about feminism and they come on it, there's just a load of men who say, what about this for men? What about this for men? What about this for men? And the female says, well, yeah, I think you're right. There are dis- issues that men face as well. And that's it. There's issues that men and women face. And unless you can create a perfect society, then they will always exist. Yeah. 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 Come to us with a game plan that's better than this and like we'll sit down and discuss it. But if there isn't a game plan that's better than this, <laughs> and, there's a whole fucking, and, you know, millennia of, of evolution down the line. Yeah. You know, we've been through we've been through Jesus, we've been through wars, and we've got but, to this point and Tim, we're still here. But, is, is that not enough? Is but, that not enough? But Tim, that's the oppression of of women that has, you know, that mil- million of years, women have always been oppressed through those those times because men have been the oppressors so you can't say that how the fuck are they still here then (laughs) why did we why did we keep making women there's so many of them yeah they seem to be i think they're outnumbering us i swear they live longer 51 percent to 49 they live longer as well yeah because they're so stressed they just live forever because of all this oppression yeah i mean um I, I do try. I, I would say, if you are a woman out there, I think I'd, I'd love to hear if it makes you angry the way I talk about it, or if you agree with me, because I think I do over. I try and make it a bit funny sometimes, which maybe I shouldn't. But I do seriously feel like it's like, like what, like leave a comment, honestly, drop us a line, yeah. come on the cast, come on the cast. Yeah. Uh, I've just, uh, I, well, I've been munching on um, fizzy strawberry flavor lances because tesco, lances? tesco have had a typo lances. <laughs> and it's been in it, it's been in the um this must be a really big batch of strawberry lances <laughs> oh <laughs> so they're not laces oh i see strawberry yeah. lances l-a-n-c-e-s fizzy lances. strawberry flavor lances where from tesco tesco mm-hmm. home brand super sour fizzy strawberry flavor lances Oh, yeah. It says it on the site as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I don't know if it's a typo or whether it's branding. Um, I think they... I think... Maybe it is. Maybe it is the name. But um, I've just had a whole packet of them, and I I think I've, like, quadrupled my daily sugar intake. For yeah, sure. Like, your wisdom tubes can be like, oh, well, he's bought the fucking lances. Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not the laces, he's gone for the lances. lances. Well, I had two packets of shrimp and bananas earlier as well. So. No, nah, so lances is right because the, the cola ones have been labelled that as well. It seems if you add sugar oh, really? to a lace, yeah, if you add sugar to a lace, it becomes a lance. Ah. Um, well, there yeah. you go. Um, anyway, there's there's lots of issues in the world. Men have it. Uh, in some areas have it harder than women and women have it in some areas harder than men um it's a symbiotic relationship the the you know the societal relationship between men and women um and that there will always be bad people in the world like regardless of what you know what you believe what you think should be right we would all love a perfect world but a perfect world wouldn't be perfect it's like a heaven that goes on forever exactly you need the bad we're not saying you need the bad but bad will always exist um uh and uh, there are definitely things that men need to improve on um you know but there are also things that I think women should improve on. Um, you know, men get treated like emotional punching bags a lot of the time. Yeah. Um, definitely when you're growing up as well. There's, definitely. There's like a there's like a sexual, um, like maybe not sexual, like a there's a level you have to hit as a man when you're growing up and as a boy or a, I think it's a, oh, I can say it's the same for a fucking girl like because they're like oh yeah you've got to wear a push up bra you've got to do all these things whatever yeah but like I think I think guys we would kind of like joke about stuff like maybe have a laugh it's quite funny I think girls used to be really fucking mean 
Girls I, in school are bitches. Yeah. Like they're really horrible to each other. Especially when they get together. Yeah. <laughs> like and they're not nice to each other as well. That's what I'm trying that's what I'm saying. Yeah. They're worse to each other than they are to, to the guys of the group. It's weird. I think girls get along better with guys. Do you ever have that when you had like a group of girl uh, sorry, a group of guys and then like a girl would just be like chilling with you and it'd actually be fine. It'd be yeah. really good fun. It'd be yeah. really good fun and really enjoyable. Yeah, yeah. Um but fuck, like girls left those on their girls own. Girls on their own, toxic. yeah. Yeah. I just remember things in the common room, like when you'd see like that one person wasn't sitting with their group of girlfriends. Yeah, like what's going on? I was just on? like, Are you right? Like, been, oh yeah, no, just uh, being kicked out. <laughs> yeah, I'm just having a bit of time with the girls at the moment, and then the girls are looking over like, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's she doing with her hair up like that? Yeah. Oh, look at her nails. <laughs> like, uh, just, uh... Anyway, we can't bag on them forever, so I'll, I'll take this moment to divert to a uh, to a much wanted question um, that I've been uh, really, really thinking about and dedicating some of my time to, which is: if you had the power to shrink any one object and carry it around with you in your pocket, what would it be? A working fusion reactor. Oh, <laughs> fucking. Jeez, I thought I'd get some time to think about. It. I guess I have to. I'll have to force you to. It. Sorry, guys, but he's going to explain what that is now. Um, well, a fusion reactor is basically just like a fu- fusion's the future. That's what you were telling me. Fusion's the future. Um, I think the hydrogen's the future. That's what I was reading about today. There's finite hydrogen, man. Like hydrogen's leaving the atmosphere as we speak, and there's like, eventually there'll be no hydrogen left. I mean, we yeah. do have an abundant source of hydrogen, which is in the form of H2O, but you need to electrolyze it to get the hydrogen out. Um, mm, ding, which ding, means ding. you're going to be consuming water. And that water, people think that water is, you know, it's a closed system. If you electrolyze it, it's no fucking closed system, mate. You've just converted that hydrogen to oxygen into hydrogen and oxygen. Hydrogen, if you manage to collect all of it, it's going to go into your bucket. The rest of it's going to escape the atmosphere through the holes in the ozone layer. The oxygen... Probably I just don't know why we don't just, just build our own ozone layer. Uh, I can't a remember one. what ozone is. Is it O3? I think uh, it's O3, yeah. I remember reading about it once. Yeah. They did try and do so because there there's a hole in it over uh, Australia, I think. There's a hole in the ozone. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not really sure what it be means a, to be a hole. Like, that'd what, be a good song. There's a hole in the ozone and it's coming for you. <laughs> Jesus. Um, the, so, yeah, the, the fusion is the future. I think it, use, it can use anything like d- deuterium, which is a fairly abundant resource. Um, smash the particles together. Uh, in a plasma and you've basically got the power of the sun in your pocket no nuclear waste just a shitload of energy with an abundant resource um once we run out of all the deuterium on this planet there are plenty of asteroids flying around that have shitload of deuterium on um and yeah if you've if if i've got i would never have to charge my phone like, I mean, I would have to charge my phone, but mm. my phone would, I would never be in a problem where I, th- I would, th- that's what I'd do is I'd get a, like, you know, a tiny fusion reactor. If that can fit in my pocket and I've got like a little vial of deuterium, which would probably last like a year in this little fusion reactor that's pumping out. All I need is 24 volts, like seven amps. That'll be plenty, which is not that big. It'd be ideal if it can do like 7,000 amps at 24 volts. That'd be nice. Um, I don't think my phone would take that though. Mm. And I'd just plug my phone in and yeah, like a little battery charger in my phone without having to charge the battery charger, you know. That'd be it. Your one wish to be able to just charge, charge your phone, phone from your pocket. Yeah. There you go. I, didn't, well, I um... could also power the rest of the world with this item. But like I, I've just chosen don't be to doing charge that. my phone. Don't be doing that, mate. Just, yeah. just, just charge Keep your phone. Keep it to myself, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what percent are you on? Ah, oh, just limitless, mate. Yeah, limitless. Un- unlimited. Um, so I, I 
I was trying to think of something that I'd choose. Um, I think it's quite an interesting question because I was I was immediately like, well, I'll choose something really big. I'll choose like the Empire State Building and I'd be like, well, look at this. I've got a, and I'd say, that's just a fucking statue that's of you. the Empire State yeah. that you, you get from the gift shop. <laughs> if you could shrink so, it down with the people inside it, then maybe it's a bit more unique. You, know, you could put your eye up to it and like see all these little people. Yeah, so working. it'd be like one of those Christmas orbs. Um, yeah, but, but they, they but, move around. Like they're still well, tapping away on their keyboard. Uh, yeah. Oh, oh, look at his yeah. Fucking, <laughs> um, oh no, this plane crash. Yeah, they'd hate it when I was walking around or Too going. Soon. It's a good thing I don't run. Um, but what if it go, I was going down the people road? Actually, I was like, well, maybe it'd be nice to shrink. Um, either I guess I could clone myself and shrink myself. Wait, hold on a minute. You didn't then, say you got a cloning device as well. What? Well, if a shrink any one object. I, I didn't define. I will shrink the clone of me that exists in this questions universe. Oh, right. Um, and then I could look at things that I was about to do and just be like, "What do you reckon, Tim? I know I've asked myself, but what if I ask little me? And then little me, <laughs> little me can just it could just like be a little reflection of myself. Or I could shrink someone sensible, uh, and I could be like, "Elon, um, what do you think? Like, yeah. and he could be like, "No, like I told Don't you last it. time, just." It probably tell me just do the opposite. That's the general rule of thumb for you, Tim. Um, but I think it'd be quite good. Or if you can't do humans, then I might take a little pet. Like I could shrink a little dog, um, and and if a dog shat in my pocket, it would just be like a little tiny raisin, and I wouldn't really have to worry <laughs> about it. And I, so I could have all the benefits of a dog, but not have to worry about it pooing. Um, Does the shrinking device also grow things back? To the normal well, size. that'd be good, wouldn't it? I'd be like, shrink, dog, shrink. And then yeah. when he's finished his poo, I'd be like, yeah, all right, back, come. Back, yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean, I guess so. An enlarger. Would you, you like go. a dog? Would I like a dog? Because um, you're going to get, like, you, the house. I'd like, you're... Yeah, I could, I know, I know. I could Definitely do it, get couldn't a dog, I? Yeah. I? could do it. Yeah, I just got, like, the thing two is, kids. Is like, and... Can you look after yourself? It's. I like the idea of having a little companion. I like the idea of the friendship from it. Um, I just don't, I don't like the idea of picking up poop. I don't like the idea of how like. What do you mean? I feel, it's not I bad. Feel like, just I feel like a dog up. is just dirty. Do you want a cat I feel, instead? I feel like a dog. If it took a poo, it could go and sit on the sofa and just quite easily just like rub its ass into the sofa. Ten <laughs> percent of that poo just ends up on your sofa, and you don't ever think about that as an owner. Yeah. True. Um. So there's kind of a line with dogs. I'd have to discuss with the dog first, maybe draw up a contract and just tell him what's no what's, what's what's the lay of the land, really, because some of them understand and some of them just don't. Um, but if I could you, find one that understood. What would you go for, a husky? I I've, liked, like... I've liked the idea of huskies. I think I've gone off them a bit um, about more. about Irish wolf? I, I really like the, um, you know, the doge dog, the shiuba or whatever they're called. Oh, Oh the, yeah, like foxes. Like, it's like like a, foxes. Yeah, I like fox dogs in a way. Mm. I like wolf looking dogs. I guess that's the answer. Um, yeah. Maybe I could get a wolf. Um there was something about wolves when I was growing up as well. I used to have a necklace that was a wolf as wolves, well. I used to they re- do really look like cool, it. don't they? They like Yeah, they're fucking brilliant. Yeah. They're little weirds. And their eyes as well. They're where their Piercing eyes are like eyes. fucking blue and all that shit. Yeah. Brilliant, but um, yeah, I'd I, I'd have to do like a shed load of allergy tests and like stroke them and be like, am I True. fine with this? Otherwise, I've, it would I think just be really um, long. I think, I think it's called a cockapoo. Cockapoo, cocker spaniel, and a poodle cross. Um, no, I don't want those little squirrel dogs. So the good thing about cockapoos is like generally I'd just step on it by accident. Like yeah, well, ge- generally. If you're allergic to dogs, you won't be allergic to cockapoos. Mm. So it's something to explore. They're nice dogs. They're nice and f- nice and fluffy, and they yeah, they're a smallish dog, but they don't like small things. It's like like when they have it. When I had Miyako, like my biggest worry when I brought her back, a... I just every time I sat down on the sofa and there was like a pillow under me, I just thought, "Fuck, yeah." <laughs> just, <laughs> it's just like you, these. Honestly, they are. I'm su- well, I'm surprised there aren't like newspaper stories every day like parents father sat like, on child yeah, dead. child child died just because they're useless. Yeah. They they're not made to survive. I don't know how we do it. Like 
they are crazy. I think their heads are like eighty percent water when they come out. Yeah. Like yeah. they're just jelly bobs, and and somehow they come good. Like well, she's doing thing. great now. But in, in the shed, um, I've got the you know I've got the gas heater, and it's quite warm in here. But sometimes when I walk outside the door, and this happened to me, this happened to me twice now. I've oh, you've the... stepped on a frog. I've stepped on a frog. I knew it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And um, it fucking shit the life out of me. Like, oh, I better scared the shit out of him. <laughs> well, the interesting thing is... What is this big thing in the sky? Yeah, it's like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, twice. I bet they probably survived, though. They're quite jelly creatures, aren't they? Yeah, that, well, he did survive, because as I come back, yeah. I saw him jumping yeah, around. Yeah, came, so... came back and you fucking stepped him in again on your way in. No, I spotted him this time, <laughs> but it happened again. I didn't realise... And the thing mm. is, they same always one. they sit. Well, I don't know if it's the same one, but they always seem to sit on the stones that I've got outside of the shed. Yeah, right where my foot will normally land. Like maybe you need to create a special, like a special place for them. They have a fucking garden and a pond. Like well, that yeah, is a special they clearly, place. Yeah, but they clearly like the stones. You need to give them the, their own stones. The reason why they like the stones is because um, the stones that they s- sit on. There's a gap underneath the door where I presume the hot air from the uh, shed escapes out of, which means but it must be nice and warm where they're sitting, like was warmer it, was than it, it is normally. Was it late at night? Um, yeah, because the thing is, time. the thing is, right, is you can't really, you can't really blame yourself. You have to blame the frog for being out late at night and on the path. <laughs> Well, in this story, I guess I am to blame. I should have been looking. <laughs> oh, it's horrendous. Yeah, at the same time. Um, so the next question is, um, it's quite a good one, is um, if you had to dedicate your life to something, what would it be? Dedicate my life to it. Which is an interesting thing because a lot in the past, it was a much more common thing to dedicate your life to something. Yeah, like, I think a lot of these great scientists and astrologers and all of these things, like that was very much how they saw it. It was like, well, this is what I like. I'm a philosopher. I'm whatever. Yeah, I will surround myself with these people who are similarly minded, and I will and explore do this, for the this rest area. Of my life. And I will document my findings, yeah, and I yeah. will die. Yeah, and that will be great. And and that's what they did, and they did it really well. And now we have this separation in the sense that. Your purpose in life isn't that. Your career is something separate. And your career feeds the other thing which is important, which is surviving and having money. Mm. And it's kind of limiting how far people dive down the rabbit hole, really. I feel like, for example, at the moment, I feel like I will die being the jack of, like, I'll know loads of different things, but I won't have, like Chris did, I won't have, built a freaking thing out of wood and lived in it because I just can't sharpen a skill to that depth because there's no freaking point anymore or maybe there's no room for it but anyway if you did have to dedicate your life what would it be Uh, because you'd want to achieve it's not just like because there's a level to which I don't want to achieve something man I, I don't have any desires to achieve something anything great like um my i guess i ju- i just love tinkering man like if i could devote my life to just tinkering around and if i could, if people want to read the documentation like, I don't after know, I've I been tinkering. have you been tinkering in the last week yeah i'm tinkering all the time mate what are you tinkering with Uh, You can't do anything inside of a screen, like physical tinkering. What's tinkering? It's programming. Like, I'm tinkering. Yeah. Programming. Do you um, not think, do you think there'll come a time where programming is just not not worth, there's there's no such thing as programming? Um, That's a world that I don't want to live in. Not because I love programming, it's because it wouldn't be a good user experience. You would everything you would use would be horrible to use. What if they just had an AI bot that just made everything the utopia? It just knew. 
I would question who wrote the AI because they've probably written it in Python, which means no, the, the, the scope AI, of the AI, the AI is... wrote itself. On what platform? On it, on its, it wrote its own platform. It wrote itself on its own written platform. Yeah. And it probably wouldn't want to engage with us. No, it so does. It just wants to come here to make everything perfect. That's an interesting thing, which is uh, what you just touched on there, which is the prime mover philosophical argument, which is... Uh, mm-hmm. So um, the whole question of, well, okay, so God made the earth. What made God? And um, I don't actually remember uh, really much about it, but there was a guy who basically, I think he said that God is outside of time and he created time and he created universe and he created distance so you can't still stands you can't you can't say who created him because creation is an event that has a time bound to it and that he is it's almost like a persistence like a force and i I was kind of like okay all right i hate that argument but you have tied your shoelaces i can't argue so my well my argument against that is like i i am like that makes sense to me all of that makes sense to me the flaw in the argument is that that's not how god is portrayed in christianity and in every other religion that references the singular god it's always referenced as a man like being that represented human race the way he is represented, um, which means, you know, like that immediately goes, right, well, he's time bound. Like he's in the same time space that we are. Um, no, nah, because it's only a third. He's got his, his dip one leg in because he's three people, isn't he? He's the father, the Holy Spirit and the son. He only sent the son. The Holy Spirit and the father were still chilling out back wherever they were. What? <laughs> so in, in Christianity, there's a trinity, isn't there? Yeah. So God, when you say God, he is the Father, which is God, the Holy Spirit, which is all well, the other sparkly that's, that's stuff. that's not what Muslim says, not what Islam says. Oh, right. Yeah, well, I don't know enough about every one, but I th- thought if you were saying God in particular. But, um, but what? Like, the, I, there is no argument for God. There is no strong argument that God exists. Even that one, it's, it's, it's a well-tied, it's a good workaround, the... You know, it's a workaround to the response of the prime mover, but it's nowhere near um, a valid argument that God exists. Hmm. Um, First of all, there is no proof that time even exists. Therefore, you can't reference something that you don't have solid knowledge of. Um, So it's a weird one time, isn't it? I yeah. don't know how I'm going to make that a topic, but time's a fucking weird one. Yeah. As weird as things go, as all the forces go, time is the weirdest. Is time a force? As I say, I, I don't have the I don't have the expertise. Yeah, maybe around podcast 20 we'll, we'll be able to answer questions I like that. I'm not sure. It. I would have well, to dedicate my life to it. Well, that's what we're doing, aren't we? Like, you've got to imagine, by, you've got to imagine at some point we will solve something. Nothing's going to be solved. No, we've uh, we've solved quite a few things if on this the, podcast. If we're going to solve something, then surely that's the that's the end. Like that's the end of the no, podcast. No, we did. No, because we <laughs> solved is cereal soup. That was a serious question people were asking, and we said, I guess it kind of is. So, uh, I think my dad's to convince me that it wasn't. Ah, <laughs> oh, fucking hell. <laughs> What's he do that for? Why, why is it not a suit? I can't remember what he said. I wish I could recall it. What's I... the definition? Should we have a look? Def- define soup. Anyway, whilst you're looking that up, um, the tinkering that I have been doing, it wasn't tinkering, it was fixing. But uh, I think me and Dad went to B&Q to get some things because we were redecorating. And we got back and I couldn't open the door. Couldn't open the front door. Not right. because I didn't have the right key. I did have the right key. But it was jammed, like mm-hmm. jammed shut, and like, I couldn't open it. Um, luckily, Dad had his key to the back door, 
So I ran around, jumped over the fence, opened the back door. I still couldn't open the door from the inside. Um, so that's what that's what I've been tinkering with. I've had to refit a new door lock mechanism to the door. Did you figure out what it was? Yeah, the um, the shoot bolt. So if you look at a door, um, if you look at your, I know, I know door locks. I've 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 mastered in door locks for my granddad. I tell you what, my granddad, any opportunity, if he, if, if if something came apart, when he next saw me, he would Have bring the pieces. He would bring me the lock. I, 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 do you know what? I fucking, I used to love playing with those locks, just sitting there sliding it in and out, just looking at all the things. Like they're quite cool. So, did he just show you the the dead bulb? Because if you look at your if you just have a quick look at your back door to your um, balcony, um, if you look at the top of the door and the bottom of the door, you will see... Finger and, clasps. Uh, they like might, they're, not, they're not part of the bolt, but they're things that are built into the side of the thing that kind of like finger latch onto the thing. Yeah, there might be latches, there and might they, be rollers, they twist there out might be depending grips. on your locking stance. Yeah. yeah. Um, anyway, so on our door, the bottom one had... Um, snapped and got stuck in the locked position so you just couldn't open it so we eventually had to take we just had to take the hinges off of the door like take the door off its hinges and then like basically rip it out the door so we had to buy a new door lock mechanism which i fitted um a couple of days ago that's That's what what i'm saying i think i think you chaps honestly like i want to see more coming out of the duo that is living in that household well, interesting things like that don't happen all the time. <laughs> yeah, but that's what I'm saying. That, like, yeah, that you're you're being reactive to your house. You're not being proactive to your house. I think that together you, you could get we you could get quite a lot Dad's done. Bedroom, just under. Yeah, I mean, you're starting. You're starting, but I think no, I think there's just, a. We've, we've decorated a whole room. Uh, yeah, oh, I'm, whole I'm room talking is about totally transforms. You would not even recognize it. I'm talking about life choices, though. I want you to be growing the. Grand, like, why are you going to Tesco's every day? Because I need to do that. You can't just grow food, Tim. You can't just grow food and then, like, you got, next you got, day what about, it's there. What about like, those, it takes what a about, whole season to grow some carrots, and the carrots then last you a couple of weeks. Yeah, but you could have started that right now. Could have, should have, would have. This is prime, this is prime season to start yeah. planting. Yeah, but then I have to wait eight months to be able to harvest. Yeah, well, you and those harvests will only last me a few weeks. What about the frogs? What about the frogs? They just live. Could uh, could build could a cook, stove, cook, cook, cook up, up some frogs. Could do some tandoori some frogs. Uh, they, well, they're in mating season, so I wouldn't want to disturb them. Oh, other than treading on them. <laughs> That's like the snails in Claudia's fish tank. They've gone, uh, they've gone crazy. Um, I am out of everything apart from... Do you feel like a leader or a follower? Hmm. A leader or a follower? Um. I I guess I'm. I don't know. Like. My intuitive answer is I'm neither, and I just sort of float around everyone else. <laughs> You're a floater. Yeah. Um, I don't want to be led, and I don't want to follow. I don't mm. want to lead. I just want to exist, give my opinion, and debate that opinion. Um, so I think I'm not very good at following <laughs> Yeah, that's the same. I don't think I don't think I'm a, I don't think I'm a lead. Well, I think I could be a leader in a lot of different ways. I just think the world isn't quite ready for that yet. Um, <laughs> but there's there's a lot of things like I'm thinking recently, and a, a lot. Of, I'm a brilliant scientist, but the world just isn't ready for me yet. Yeah, they're not. But so I think there's a lot of times in life where I have looked up to leadership figures. And allowed them to lead me and believed it was it was beneficial and that when I was following, sometimes they would be critical of my following or say, 
this isn't the way to do it. You should be doing this. Um, and I think that... That's more mentorship I, than leader, though. Yeah, but I, I guess what I'm talking, not so much about the leader, is more about my ability to follow, is that right. I, I keep finding myself in similar situations where mm. my character traits basically make me defy the way that my leader or whoever it is at the time, this isn't just in work, wants me to do something. And uh, for a long time, I used to sit there and think, what the fuck is wrong with me? What the fuck is wrong with me? Why do I always do do things my own way? And it's like, I just do the same thing. And it's, this is the reason why I'm doing it. And I've come to the establishment like today that I think I glorify leaders too much. And that maybe maybe the way that I want to do things would work better. It's just like, it's just not, it's not my, it's not my time. I I mean, it's not, it's not the right place yet. I don't think, I don't think you should say that because when you say that it's what that jump, the thing that jumps out to me is that the leaders that you have aren't good leaders themselves. Um, a good leader. And I, and maybe I'll I'll just like reference Ivan here. Like Ivan is a good leader. He he knows like he knows a way of doing something. But if you can do something in a way that he doesn't do it, and like he will show you the way he does things. Um, whether that be like writing a PRD or designing some UI or whatever. Um, he can sit there and mentor you through the process of how he does it. But if you come back to him with the output that is needed for the job, but you went at it your own way, he's going to support you on that and go, show me, show me what you did. Like this, I want to know how you got to that because the, what you have I don't have, and maybe I need some of what you have, and you need some of what I have. That's a good leader. Um, good leaders don't just say, "Here, do this, and this is how you do it." That's 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 not leadership. That's um, pushing from behind. Yeah. And with that, I do want to move into a private discussion. Um, about that topic so thank you all for listening um two views on the last one so if you've doubled that this week then we've absolutely smashed it uh we will discuss internally um that we need to do more promotion for the podcast um so yeah get ready for 100 views next week (laughs) 